In this video, you'll learn how to create a simple scheduling application with the scheduler control, plus how to provide data for it. For this demo, we chose the Entity Framework as the data source. First, let's create a new WPF application project in Visual Studio, name it DX Scheduler Getting Started, and open the main window.xaml file in the designer. Use the Instant Layout Assistant to create a simple layout with the scheduler control. Click the Scheduler Control tile, and then click the Simple Scheduler tile. Note that the scheduler can work without the data source, in unbound mode, but any changes you make will not persist between sessions. To save changes, the scheduler should be bound to an external data source. This example implements Entity Framework objects as the data source. The Entity Framework is Microsoft's recommended data access technology for new applications. To use the Entity Framework, install the Entity Framework NuGet package. To get this, right-click on the DX Scheduler Getting Started project in the Solution Explorer and select Manage NuGet Packages. In the Manage NuGet Packages dialog, select the Online tab and choose the Entity Framework Package. Click Install. Next, add the ADO.NET Entity Data Model to the project by doing the following. Right-click on the project name, select Add, then New Item. Select Data, ADO.NET Entity Data Model, and enter My Scheduler Model for the name. In the Entity Data Model Wizard, select the Empty Code First Model and click Finish, and the model template is created. In the model template, replace the public class My Entity Class definition with the code for EF Appointment and EF Resource classes. Copy the code from the Lesson 1 Bind a Scheduler to Data document available online. Now let's change the XAML code of the scheduler control in the main window page to specify the data source and mappings for the appointment storage and resource storage components. Again, copy the code from the Lesson 1 Bind a Scheduler to Data document. The Entity Framework requires a context object. It should be the class that descends from the system.data.entity.db context class. We'll name it My Scheduler Model. And, again, copy the code from the Lesson 1 Bind a Scheduler to Data document. Let's provide a database initializer that populates the database with data immediately after the database is generated. The scheduler DB initializer class inherits from the drop create database if model changes interface. This strategy means that it will automatically delete and recreate the database and optionally seed it with the new data if a model changes. To initially populate a resource table, override the scheduler db initializer's seed method. To do this, let's implement the scheduler db initializer class. Copy the code from the same lesson 1 bind a scheduler to data document. Let's subscribe to the main window's loaded event in XAML. In the code behind class, mainwindow.xaml.cs, load the data from the database and set the data context for the appointment storage and the resource storage objects. Note that to use the load extension method of the system.data.entity.db context class, you should declare the system.data.entity namespace using the C-sharp or imports Visual Basic directive. The local property of the system.data.entity.db context class should be used for data binding. To post data back to the database, use the save changes method of the system.data.entity.db context EF appointment class. Now, let's subscribe to the scheduler storage.appointments inserted, scheduler storage.appointments changed, and the scheduler storage.appointments deleted events and call the save changes method in the event handler. Again, we'll copy the required code from the lesson 1 bind a scheduler to data document.
Next, override the onClosing method of the main window class object for the correct disposal of the data context. To create all available ribbon items within the scheduler control at design time, right-click the scheduler control and select the Create Ribbon Items All from the context menu. In the Visual Studio Designer, click the ribbon control and set the ribbon style to Office 2010. Now, click Main Window in the Designer and use its Smart Tag to change the application theme to Office 2013 and convert the window to DX Ribbon Window. And let's run the application. You'll see that the DX Scheduler Getting Started My Scheduler Model Database is created automatically and the resource table is populated with data. Let's select a time cell and type in any text to create a new appointment. Double click to open the appointment editing form. Let's add the recurrence rule to the appointment. Note, you can save appointments to a file in iCalendar format. I'll switch views using the ribbon UI. and change the label for the appointment occurrence and for the entire series. Next, switch to the Timeline view. By default, appointment rectangles are expanded to full time cell width. You can set the Snap to Cells option to Never so that the width of the appointment rectangle correctly represents the appointment interval according to the current time scale. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress.